I'm Amistad Steve Rhodes, as we do each and every Monday at 20 past the hour. And don't forget, folks, Steve has an outstanding show every trading day right here. 1 to 2 Eastern Standard Time, also a great newsletter, Mastering Probability. Now, it's very easy to get Steve's newsletter, folks. Come over to our website at TFNN. You're going to hit newsletters. You're going to see it right on the right-hand side. You just hit subscribe. You can get Steve's newsletter for one month for $149. You can get it for uh, three months for $690, six months, rather, for $695, which is a savings of $199, or uh, 22%. And you can get it for the year for $11.95, which is a savings of $593 or 33%. Now, they all come with a 30-day money-back guarantee, folks. So check it out. This is a great trading market. There's no doubt. Uh, Steve Rhodes, what's going on? <laughs> well, Tom, uh, around lunchtime today, I was at the eye doctor this morning. And, the, uh, you know, hey, you should fill up. You should, you should add some gas to your car. Light came on. So it wasn't totally empty. Yeah. You know, but was, you know, below a quarter of a tank probably. 117 bucks. There you go. Philip, you get you got a tank that's over twenty gallons. I like it. There you go. <laughs> and, and so the other the other crazy thing, I I go back and forth to Naples pretty often these days. Yeah. And uh, and I know and and yesterday, so I, I had to fill up before I left, or I, I put gas in before I left, and uh, and I paid uh, five sixty. I think was the was the price, and then when I got to Naples is where I really filled up, yeah. and it was seventy cents a gallon cheaper. Yeah, see, over here it's where 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 at where at four ninety, right? Right. Yeah, yeah. It, it just, you guys you know, have I get more it. money on your coast anyway, so. No, no, no. That's not <laughs> it. <laughs> I, David was telling me that it's because you guys have got some depots over there, so the transportation costs, but still seventy it, cents a gallon. Uh, it's it's, it's heavy, second. man. It's it's gonna hit people. There's no doubt about it, man. Yeah, yeah there's no yeah. doubt. So I thought today we'd take a little bit of a look at the big picture, okay. maybe a smaller picture as well. And so to start off with the big picture, I'd like to start with this chart here. Tell people understand really about the global flow of capital, capital fleeing Europe, wherever it might flee and where it might go to. So if we take a look at the highs of 2000, we'd be looking at the left-hand side of the chart. And up in the upper portion, we're looking at the euro U.S. dollar. I don't think I have the charts. Oh, there we go. I have them. Thank you. Okay, I got perfect. Them. We got them. Okay, perfect, yep. perfect. So from, from on the upper left-hand side, yeah. uh, what we've got out here is uh, we have the euro falling, capital fleeing Europe, and moving into the that, – that was, that was one of the elements that really helped our markets move higher into 2000. I know they call it the dot-com bubble, but it's still capital was fleeing from Europe. It was coming into the U.S. That helped to push markets higher. We have that same pattern. Uh, that has been going on since 2009. Again, the upper right-hand portion of the uh, top portion of this chart, the euro moving lower, really started moving lower as soon as in June when the ECB moved to negative interest rates. And that's actually when the U.S. stock market really took off to the upside. It was already moving higher, but boy, once those negative interest rates, we had capital fleeing Europe, moving into the U.S. So just important for people to understand that picture out here. Now, the same pattern, like I say, has been unfolding uh, since 2009. If the euro busts through the 2016 lows, now because I'm using a line chart here, this is the closing price of the euro, and I'm using a monthly time frame chart. If you look at candlesticks, you'll see the price got lower than the buck five that's uh, shown here. But on a closing basis, if the euro breaks through these lows out here, uh, that is then going to send a significant amount of capital into the U.S. So just trying to give people the bigger picture, Tom. Yes. Uh, and it's really important for us to, to, to take a look at the euro. And so speaking of the euro, and this is a monthly time frame chart. When the euro topped in 2008, so going back to our markets moving higher, the euro topped in 2008, capital fleed, fled uh, Europe into US stocks. Uh, it was a TD9 count pattern, this is blue arrow across the top that identified that top. If we take a look at coming into January of 2021, it was another TD9 count top that had formed out there. So again, capital coming out of Europe into the US. Now. We fast forward to today, where I've got this blue arrow, bottom portion of my screen here. This month, the month of uh, March, is going to become bar number eight of a TD9 count. Now, in the case of TD9 counts, they can top with bar number eight, much like it did back in the 2008 time frame, or it can be bar number nine or the bar following nine. But this is setting up, as long as the euro holds, I'd say the 104 to 107 level, this would suggest that uh, there may be a bounce or a bottom. And that bounce or bottom for the euro, Tom, should take it up into the 
this 114-ish level. This little green red line, that's what I refer to as the oscillator unchanged line. And when it changes colors, especially when there's a top or bottom being made, that is typically where price will go ahead and gravitate itself to. So at this stage right now, I would say at the end of March, it looks like the euro might be might save itself at this stage. But look, if it takes out those lows at a buck four out there, then uh, you know, then all heck is going to break loose and we'll see uh, money come into the uh, U.S. stock market. So they may be on pause. The euro may be on pause. Now, if we then take a look at our U.S. markets, we take a look at the Dow. The Dow has a yearly TD9 count top. Remember I said when we we're looking at the euro, the top of a TD9 count can happen on either bars eight, bar nine, or the bar following. In this case here for the Dow, it's the bar following nine. That's on a yearly basis. So we've got that top that's in place out here. On a monthly basis, this triggered a road's momentum indicator signal. So we've got that top from a monthly standpoint. The weekly standpoint, we have wave number seven. That's an element of Basil Chapman's Chapman wave out there. So that's a top. And again, on the daily time frame now, we've got a TD9 count bottom that is formed. So that's important to take a look at. But when we come down below and take a look at the daily time frame chart here for the Dow Equity Future contract, where the Dow Cash does not have a TD9 count top, we do have one in place here for the Dow Equity Future contract. So at this stage here, um, we may be seeing a short-term top that forms relatively soon. And when I say relatively soon, uh, well, here's here's the Dow Weekly chart. So the, 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 the bear side is that we get a TD9 count and we see price pull back. The bullish side is we take a look at uh, really one of Bud Rolf's charts, so to speak. Here we've got horizontal trading ranges. Those are the green horizontal lines. It's a weekly chart that we're looking at for the Dow. And then we've got our diagonal trend channels out here. And the cool thing is, Tom, when you create the trend channel coming off the 2009 low to the March uh, 20, uh, 2009 low, and then you can clearly see the highs out here, all I do is I just take that width of that. And then it just simply increases by that same width to get these dashed lines out here. So interestingly, enough when you get through one area you then move on to the next area so if we take a look at where the dow topped it was topping into a horizontal trading range into a rising trend line but right now as long as the dow holds 34.152 that's the price that people should be looking at it could be signaling that the markets move higher but the daily time frame has these topping signals so that takes us back to the s p 500 and if we look at the s p 500 here on the daily basis today is going to become bar number nine whether it's for the cash indice or whether it's for the daily time frame that says we could see the high occur tomorrow could be today or tomorrow that high can form a bars eight nine or the bar following nine this might just be a pullback or retracement this would be your devious thing here because yeah. you're thinking hey the markets might move higher well we might have a short-term top as we talked about before when we get those top or bottom signals price typically pulls back into that oscillator and change line so a move back to 4410 would be normal it would could be the next entry point to the to the to the uh, to a move higher out here but we do have or i do have some short-term topping signals now the real levels for folks to be watching at overnight so i'll get right to the point here if this is a top we're going to see levels get broken support levels these blue arrows show us where these are breakout levels on a 30-minute time frame for the es mini these are where the buy the dips were but if price closes below one of those, that tells us we've got some type of change in character or trend in the market. So the level to be watching overnight and the level to be watching tomorrow right now is 4504.50 in the ES Mini. Close below that, that'll give us a signal to the downside. It's, it, isn't this amazing? I mean, it, it, listen, it's blowing my mind. I think it's going back to the highs, but I don't think it's going to hit the highs. And if yeah. we just underneath them, it's like unreal. Right. Check, yeah, out, check out Steve's newsletter, folks. Thanks, Matching probability, TFNN. Have a great one, Steve. Have a safe one.